the kingdom of God and activities related to it are frequently associated with words. Words are ex intelligent expressions of thought, mm -hmm. communicate a message. When Peter preached on the day of Pentecost <coughs> in Acts 2.22, he said, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Mm -hmm. Words. An angel appeared to the apostles after they had been incarcerated. He told them, he said, Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words mm -hmm. of this life. When Peter uh, confronted Cornelius after he had been directed there and, and God had prepared and God had prepared um, Cornelius to receive Peter, these words were spoken by a, a holy angel to, to Cornelius. Of Peter he said, Who shall tell thee words mm -hmm. whereby thou and all thy house might be saved? Words. And again, Paul admonished Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, 6. Put the brethren in remembrance of these things. If thou put the brethren in, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine. Nourished up in the words of So the old aphorism, I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any time, is nothing but nonsense. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Whatever your life communicates is worthless if there's not words. Yeah. There have to be words. You can study creation when it has God's thumbprint upon it. But until you heard words from God, you didn't know anything about that. That's uh -huh. right. You had zero level of knowledge about God being seen in creation until God gave words mm -hmm. that said that and gave words that told you what could be seen Amen. in it. Until then, you didn't see it, you nor know, did anyone else in the whole world see it. Words. So we talk about <laughs> words, divine nomenclature, words that God uses. These have a great deal to do with how you think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People who think wrongly have heard wrong words. That's right. Yeah. So it's important to use right words. Mm -hmm. Now tonight we're looking at the word feign <coughs> or feigned. It's an important word. Our text in Luke 20, 20 actually is an example of this. The chief priests and the scribes were against Jesus, but they feared the people because the people were attracted to Jesus. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they watched him and sent spies, sent forth spies, which should feign mm -hmm. themselves to be just men. Not just men, just men. Right. Righteous men. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They pretended. Uh -huh. To be righteous men. Well, there's a lot of people do this. You've got to be able to detect it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Feign. So let's look at the meaning of the word first. Feign or feigned. In the Old Covenant Scriptures, in the Hebrew language, feign means to decide to act or speak under a false part or pretense. Uh -huh. To pretend. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a decision that's made. Yeah. People decide to do this. We talk about feigned, it's not something you do accidentally, yeah. something you do deliberately. Mm -hmm. In the New Covenant Scriptures, in the Greek language, feign means to take up another statement, to impersonate anyone, to simulate, feign, pretend, make believe, as assuming a counterfeit character, to give an impression of having certain purposes while really having other ones. Hypocrisy. Uh -huh. yeah. Pretend you're a Christian. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Pretend you're a preacher. Yeah. Whatever. Uh -huh. In the English language, 
fame. It's a good English word. It means to give a false appearance. To induce is a false impression. To assert as if true. I'm a Christian. Thinking if you say it loud enough, maybe you'll make it true. To pretend. It's a counterfeit, fake, sham. To simulate. Now as the Word of God has considerable to say about this. There's some examples of people who feign themselves. Which is going to give us an idea of what we're talking about here. You might think, well, I'm not in danger of any of this. So, Now, this is one of the liabilities of having a godly assembly. Mm -hmm. There's certainly a liability to having an ungodly assembly. Here's one of the liabilities to having a godly assembly. Mm -hmm. If you're not godly, you'll be tempted to pretend that you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm? There'll be people interested in the Word of God. If, you're, if the majority of the people are interested in the Word of God, you will pretend as though... You're interested in the Word of God. Well, of course, we'll be able to tell eventually whether you are or not, and you'll be able to tell whether we are or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because pretension finally runs out. Yeah. It's a very shallow uh, shallow jar, so to speak. Now, let's look first of all at how the word, this word is used in the Scriptures. Sometimes it has a good, a good connotation, as we'll, we'll see in David in the first here. This first text is found in 1 Samuel 21.13. David is uh, among the enemy camp. And it says of him, he changed his behavior before them. And feigned himself mad. He acted like he's crazy. In their hands, like when he was in, uh, among them. And he scrabbled, slobbered, spit, foamed at the mouth. He scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Make it like a crazy man. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's pretty ingenious mm -hmm. if you look at it. Because people don't want to be around a crazy person. Yeah, yeah. So this, is, this was his tactic when he was with the Philistines. They didn't deserve to see the truth. They'd seen they'd been confronted with God's people. They'd been confronted with the truth. And some people don't deserve to hear the truth anymore. David didn't preach, didn't preach to the Philistines. They were enemies. There's some people they don't deserve to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's what he did. He feigned. He really, he really was of sound mind. But see, feigning is something you do deliberately. <coughs> now here's another example of a woman of Tekoa who is of note. Second Samuel fourteen two. 